Well, hello everyone. Looks like I'm out of focus. Let me fix that. Oh, okay, nice big. There we go. Nice and up close. Up close. We're personal now. Let me go into my deep voice. And let me talk some smooth, smooth jazz music. <laughs> oh my god. <clears throat> Alright, how's everyone doing today? Okay, looks like I gotta fix this. There we go. Fix that. Oh, I gotta fix this over here. Alright, so... It's cold. It is cold in my house. Big time. Big time cold. So I have my robe on. <laughs> Don't judge me, okay? I work from home. I can do that. Okay, so first things first. I have switched over my theming and I'm using Streamlabs now. I hope I have things hooked up right. I don't know. Can someone like type in the chat real quick just so I know it's hooked up right? Otherwise, I'll need to adjust some settings somewhere. Uh, that would kind of suck if I don't have it set up properly. Anybody just... Oh! Cal28, thank you! Okay, it works. Now, I still have a lot of work to do. I still have all my... Uh, all my alerts and stuff that aren't set up yet. But I'm hoping to get all that that squared away. Right, gotta get that fixed. Uh, and I need to work on my design a little bit. I'm not really happy with... Let me move myself down a little bit. I'm not super happy with this screen here, but I don't know. What do you guys think? What do you guys think? You like this? I'm not sure. Old man robes. <laughs> God. Yes. Like I said, it is cold. It is cold in my house. It's uh, So because I work from home, I like to save on energy. And I don't run the heater unless I have to. And so I don't have to because I can put clothes on. So it's like 65 degrees in my house right now. <laughs> so it's like, okay, it's a little cool. It's a little cool. Let me throw a robe on. But, uh, so yeah. Last Tuesday, I had a massive stream failure. Massive stream failure. Nothing worked. My internet was broken. My freaking mic wasn't working right. Like nothing was going right, but it looks like we're all good. Hopefully my audio was good. Hopefully the sound, the background music is just, you can barely hear the background music. Can anyone hear the background music? Like it should just be very subtle, right? Very subtle background music. Can you hear that? No. Okay. So maybe I need to turn that up just a little bit. How about now? Okay. Cool. Thank you very much. Yeah. That's what sucks about like setting up your system again is you kind of have to like go through all this every now and then to make sure all your levels are right. Because you don't want your background music like overpowering, but you kind of just want it kind of sitting back there so you don't have the awkward silence like this. See how awkward that would have been if I didn't have that background music? <laughs> okay, so I don't have a lot of time today. I just got out of a webinar. Uh, I was showing people how to embed data analytics in their native applications. And so I have a very short amount of time. So I wanted to hop into our, uh, hop into the code, hop into what we were doing last time. And it looks like I still have some adjustments to do on my cropping. Uh, so let me come... I'm going to go to my King camera here. Let me just... Oh, it's locked. No, it's not locked. Can I not crop that right now? Oh, I don't want to do that. You know what? That's fine. You're just going to have to have a, uh, a little window there. But normally I can crop that. And it's not wanting to work. Nope. That's not working. Oh, well, you're just going to have to see some background until I get that. Oh, you know what? You know, let's do this. Uh, let's add a filter. And here, I'll show you how this kind of works. So I have my OBS open, right? So I can go ahead and add a crop. And then let's go ahead and I'm going to look because I can see these edges. You see this edge right here on my green screen? Uh, let's go ahead and start cropping that out. 
from the left, let's go 75. And then from the right, let's do another 75. There. Fixed. Not bad, huh? Not too bad. A mirror universe has been opened. That's nothing. I can show you a mirrored universe. You want to see a mirrored universe? Check that out. How about them apples? <laughs> that was a mirrored universe for sure. Okay. So let's kind of hop back into what we were trying to work on last time. And I remember what we worked on last time. Last time... Uh, where am I going? Oh, yeah, dev. If you remember, we were working on the XAML register mo modules right here. Right? Uh, and it wouldn't work. Like, we got an exception. And so, I'm just going to duplicate this real quick. I'm just going to run this again. Because we were working on building the sample applications for the Pluralsight course, right? Uh, so, let me do a build. And so, we have this... XAML file. Oh, I must have totally broke things. Let's try this again. Restore NuGa packages. Let's do a build. There we go. Build. Oh no, I, I know what I did. I actually removed the NuGa packages on this because I found out there is a big difference between the way .NET Core loads assemblies and the way that .NET Framework loads assemblies. So that kind of blows big time for us, right? So I actually, we have to make a decision and I'm going to open a new folder uh, because let me show you something. We have to make a decision about what we're going to demo in this module. Okay, so a module catalog lets you have code, which we saw at .config, load from a disk, and then the XAML. Now, this is the one that's having the problems because of the way assemblies are being loaded. Now, we have a couple options. Option one is when I do a demo, because I'm going to do a demo for showing how to do it in code, showing how to do it in app config, showing how to do it in the disk slash directory. Option one is I just don't show a demo of how to do it in XAML. Okay. Uh, another option is I can show a way to load modules in XAML, but I have to do a .NET Framework project. Right? <laughs> Dan, why are you wearing a bathrobe? Because it's cold in my house. Okay. It's like 66 degrees or 64 or something like that. It's like, it's cold. And no, I'm not going to turn the heat on because I'm, I'm a cheap bastard. <laughs> I, could, I could put clothes on and stay warm. Right. Uh, oh, you know, another thing. Hold on. I forgot to add something. Ah, uh, no. It, no, if I did that. Like, hold on. Plank my setup here. I could, I mean, I could raise this up. But what's that look like? What's that look like if I come over to Visual Studio, which I don't have open right now? I mean, that's not horrible. That's not horrible. Okay. That's all I was saying. So, option one is we just don't show a demo of the XAML, how to do it in XAML for .NET Core. Option two is we show how to do it in XAML, except we use a .NET framework project. Now, if we did that, that might cause some confusion because if someone tries to do that in .NET Core and it doesn't work because I haven't fixed the bug yet, right? <laughs> MMSoft, you don't have a sweatshirt? <laughs> Uh, I do have a sweatshirt, actually, but this is more cozy. This this wraps my whole body all the way down to my ankles, right? Actually, I'm getting kind of warm. This thing is kind of hot, so I will probably take this off now because uh, it's getting a little hot. <laughs> Dan, an MVP jacket. There you go, an MVP jacket. <laughs> I 
I actually have some of those, but they're so ugly I never wear them. But yeah, so back to my dilemma. Back to the dilemma. Should we just not do a demo of how to do it in XAML? I mean, that would honestly be the easiest thing. Don't do a demo of doing it in XAML. If I did a demo of this using a XAML module catalog, then I would have to do it in .NET Core. But if, I mean, in .NET Framework. But if I did that, people watching the course and following along, they create a .NET uh, Core project, they're like, oh, it doesn't work. Then again, it's possible I can fix this bug because let me open up my uh, browser here. I have this reported right there. Right, uh, XAML module catalog is broken. Now, it's possible I can fix this. Oh, I could just say, oh, what's Dan saying over here? How many people ran into a problem with their module catalog not being loaded from their XAML catalog? Nobody. I'm the first one to do it. Because, for one, I don't think loading for XAML catalogs are that common. And two, uh, it's .NET Core is definitely not that common yet. People are still on .NET Framework, so. MMSoft, no demo for XAML. Done. I'll fix this later, but we will not do a demo for XAML. Awesome. Okay. So that means this is done. Done, 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 done. Perfect. So let's wrap up. Uh, register modules. Delete. Okay. So we can zip these up. Uh, Dan, we can do a hot fix and service release for Prism 7.2 if you want. Nah, you know what? I'm not worried about it. Because what's cool is when I do fix the bug, I can always come back and record that specific demo, right? So by not doing it, it's not hurting anything. But if I did it and only did .NET Framework, it would be confusing and could possibly cause problems down the road if I don't have time to, to fix the way we load assemblies in .NET Core for that specific scenario, right? So I think it's better, just like MMSoft said, don't do the demo because I can always come back and add it later at any time. So let's send this to a zip file. Demos. Done. Bam! Liking it. Okay. Let's do module four. Oh, I mean five. <laughs> Crap. We are cruising right along. Uh, actually, I'm going to read the name is... So I know what I'm doing. There we go. Okay. So what's next? What's next on our course description here? Ah, uh, you know they put one as course overview. I better update. I better do this. Let's do this one to six. I better do this because I need to stay in line with what they're doing. Even though I don't like it. it drives me nuts. Wait, is that right? I think this is right. I need to update I need to up them by one. Yes, that's right. And so this is actually be See that M4 M4-demos. So this is actually M5. Because when I log into the website, they have it where uh, it matches this, where one is a course overview. It's like a stinger reel, right? So what they want you to do is that they want you to uh, record all your entire course, and then you'll go back and you'll do like a quick like bumper reel highlight reel uh, for the for the first course overview module. So I got to make sure I'm in line with what they're doing. Okay, done. Yep, this is module three now. Death Knight! Yes, I am glad I am back up myself. Oh, I didn't mean to open that.
Okay. M3. Good. Yeah, I had a ton of di difficulties last week, didn't our Tuesday. Ton. So annoying. All right, now all my naming convention, my naming convention is square with what they are expecting. So now let me go back to our proposal. And after modules, number six is displaying views using view. Co Ooh, wait a minute. Hold on. Yes. Okay. Yes. This makes sense. Uh, wait, do you, hold on. No, it doesn't make sense. What happened? Seven? Uh-oh. This got messed up. This got messed up. Oh my goodness. Please tell me I have a backup of this somewhere. Please tell me I have a backup of that somewhere. How did that get messed up? S somehow... That got pasted. See, this is the same. Number seven, this is view model locator. Making the connection. Oh, wait, wait. Composite command. Compo this is command... Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. False alarm. <laughs> False alarm. <laughs> yes, it's jumping. It's not... Okay, hold on. How do I get this to like one page? Oh, that's ugly. There. Oh my gosh. That was confusing. Okay, that scared me. Okay, nothing's messed up. Nothing's messed up. Okay, number six. Displaying views with using view composition. Here we go. What is a view? Create. Okay, we're back. Got it. Dang word. Why you want to confuse me like that? Why are you gonna confuse me like that? Uh, this is M6. And uh, paste that in there. Okay, what's our agenda? <sighs> well, we have what is a view? Creating a view. View composition. That's view discovery, view injection. Okay, so let me just make some notes really quick. What is a view? View composition. View discovery. Uh, and view injection. Okay, not bad, not bad, not bad. Okay, so I think I'm done with that. Now, uh, back to my training, prism training. Am I still on day one? Can I reuse? Ah, views. Here we go. Views. Ah, here we go. Yes, I can reuse this stuff. Okay, so I can. That makes sense. I could totally do that. Uh, I'm not, not sure about that. So this is view composition. Okay, not bad. So I'm good with this. Let's start kind of sharing my content here. Uh, let's add a new slide on this side. The layout will be probably something like this mmsoft i want the infragistics sample since i use infragistics perfect i actually ha i don't know have you uh have you seen the ig outlook or the infragistics outlook app i wrote with prism mmsoft have you seen that if not i can get you a link oh okay uh, what is a whoop not what is that view? Well, let's do that real quick. Oh, let's see. Uh, let's go to GitHub. 
Yeah, actually, it's under my my repositories. Where is it? Oh, Prism Outlook, right here. So this is, I'll paste that in there. So MMSoft, if you check that repo out, this is an Outlook application built using Prism and uh, Infragistis controls. So it's gonna have all the region adapters for like the ribbon, uh, for like the Outlook manager, things like that. Or the Outlook uh, group control, whatever it's called. Right, so check that out. All right, what is the view? All right. Yes, yes, MMSoft. That is the one I did a couple months ago. Yes, sirree. All right, so this is a... Can I just copy and paste this? Because that would make my life so much easier. Yes, I can. Sweet. Yeah, so a view is huge control. Okay. I'm not sure what I was trying to talk about in this. What was it? Maybe I was talking about how you would separate these. You know what? I'm going to put this in there just because I wasn't quite sure what I was talking about. And then I will uh, decide if I'm going to keep it or not. Oh, no, that's not what I want to do. So we'll just paste it there. I'll keep it, but it may go away. I'm not sure. So this one. KRJX! Thank you for the subscription, my friend. Much appreciated. Okay, we are going to do... What are we going to do here? Can I just copy all this? Because I think I have a cool animation with that. Yes. Okay, now let's take this. But I want to use the destination. Uh, design. Uh, it's design, right? Font color. Okay, I'll need to adjust that a little bit for sure. Greg, I see your emotes. I see your emotes looking at me. Man, I cannot spell. Composition. Okay, let's see here. View discovery. Oh, that's important. View discovery is important. But we'll do a different layout for this one. That one. Now, I have a feeling I'm going to change this up quite a bit. In lurker mode! Thanks for the subscription! I didn't see you lurking there. But you were there. Hmm. Should I be scared? <laughs> okay, what's next? View injection. Yes, we need to talk about view injection. I'm already... Yeah, I'm already kind of thinking these are going to change a little bit. Actually, a lot bit. And I also have to look at what I did in my last, in my course. Uh, and then that's it when it comes to views. <laughs> in lurker mode, that's the point of lurking. You know what? I'm going to have that song. Uh... What's a song? That creepy song of the guy, I've been watching you. You know you know what a song I'm talking about? What is the, oh my gosh. It left my mind. It wasn't Sting. I forgot who sung that. It's like a total like lurking song. It's perfect. Yes, every breath you take, KR Jax, thank you very much. When you're streaming, I am peeking through your window. <sighs> okay. I think that's all I can take from this slide deck. So I'm going to close this. Now let's look at what I did. Plural site. Prism introduction. Uh, okay. 
views. What did I talk about here? Let's see. Real quick, what did I did? Yeah, it might not be the name, right, KR Jack, but I... Ah. Uh, hold on. Every breath you take... Let's look. I think this is it. Popping up design ideas. If I want you, I will ask for you. Yeah, this will work just fine. And then let's copy that. <laughs> Dang it, Clippy. Exactly. That's the same freaking thing. Here we go. That's a control or view. I'll probably get rid of that one because I don't need it. And we'll do this. And this one. Now I will mess with the colors later. But I think that is a better representation. Yeah, I definitely need to mess with those colors. But that is a better explanation. So when we start talking about what a view is, uh, it is a portion of your UI. It's it's a singular concept, right? So in this in this view, uh, you can think of you know a v in this example, you can think of a view as a specific focused area of your app, right? So in this case, one view would be this this ribbon control. That ribbon component would be a view. Uh, another view would be this content area. That would be one control that hosts all the content uh, for that view to function, right? And then when we start talking about this, we'll say, well, in a Prism application, what is a view? Well, it's a user control, right? That's exactly what it is. When you want to create a new view in Prism, you will create a new user control, and that is your view. And the cool thing about it is that views can be made up of multiple views. So you can have composite views. So views within views within views. It can be as simple or as complicated as you want it to be. And obviously, you can have multiple instances of that view, especially if you're like in some type of list box control or some type of list component, right? You can have a view that you're using as a template and that view is just replicated uh, for each instance in that list. So I think that, that kind of gets the point across, right? Uh, now we have this issue of these are just too freaking big. Uh, what size font is this? 24, 24, 24. Okay, so I got to shrink to stay within the guidelines. I'll probably have to shrink this stuff. Uh -huh. Is there a way I can shrink all that together because <sighs> that blows I mean I could probably bring this down here 
Maybe that's better. Okay, I'll do that. Because I don't want to, like, play around with sizes. Okay, so what do I have in my current course? My current course, I'm talking about... That's good. Yep. Oh, yep, talked about that. Uh, use your control page. Well, I don't... I'm not saying this anymore. And you're saying, well, you know, technically that's true. But, like I said, I'm not going to show you the old way I used to do it where, oh, you can do all these different things. No. I'm going to show you the way I recommend it. And it should always be a user control. Because you would use a user control in your data template if you had a data template, right? So let's keep going with that. Patterns not required. That is true. That is true. However, in the new world, in this new course, it's not true. I'm going to tell you to use MVVM and I'm going to show you how to implement MVVM. Remember, the biggest mistake I made with this course about 10 years ago was I left it too open, right? Too many ways to do the same thing. You know, it's a little confusing. It's like, okay, I shouldn't have done that. So this course, I'm going to tell you and show you how to do it. Like, no, yeah, you're going to use a pattern. You're going to use MVVM. I'm going to make you. I'm going to come to your house and I'm going to force you. No. <laughs> okay, now who's the creeper, right? No, uh, but no, I'm going to definitely guide you. Uh, down the path of success. See, even my demos here, uh, I'm kind of in the way here, kind of in the way. But even my demo here, like with MVVM, creating a view with MVVM view first, view model first, like all this crazy stuff, right? No, don't need to do that. Okay, so now we talk about view composition. Okay, let me get make up. Yep. So let's see here. Come on, display the regions. Yep. Okay. Pause. Okay. Dan, will you be wearing one of those hazmat suits so you do infect us with your coronavirus? Ha <laughs> ha. Maybe. You know what? So we had our last Boise Code Camp meeting on Tuesday. Okay. And it was at Idaho Pizza Company. And this is a pizza buffet place. This is where we have it every week. And we actually canceled Boise Code Camp because of the coronavirus. Our our attendance numbers were super low. Our speakers were dropping out. And before we put any money down, because it costs like 25 grand to put this event on, uh, it's free for attendees, but it costs us money, right? We decided to cancel it. That way we could refund all our, uh, all our sponsors who needed a refund, and we wouldn't lose any money, right? So we made the call. We canceled it. However, we had one last meeting on Tuesday. And I sit down at the table, <clears throat> and there's this guy. He's not part of the core planning meeting, and he helps out with sponsorships and stuff, right? V great help. Does great work. Volunteer work. We totally appreciate his help. But his ass was sick. Coughing. And his napkin. <laughs> at a buffet. And, like, I asked him, like, bro, you okay, man? He's like, oh, yeah, I just, uh. I just you have a cold. I'm like, really? It doesn't sound like a cold. It's like, yeah, I, I went to a doctor. It's like, I had a 103 fever. I'm like, okay, colds? You don't get a 103 fever with a cold, for one. Okay. So two, you're in a public place. Like, why'd you come here? You're like, don't come here. You're sick. Get the hell out of here. What are you doing? And I was sitting right across from him as he, like, like hacking. Oh my God, I'm so paranoid. I'm going to get sick. I'm so paranoid. Because get this, here's the kicker. Guess where he got sick? Hold on. Guess where he got sick? I'm going to wait for some comments. Go ahead. I'm going to wait for some comments. Guess. Guess how he got his illness. Oh, you guys are so close. You guys are so close. Dan says in China, KR Jacks Italy, he was on a cruise ship. Like, come on, man! You got coronavirus! Get the hell out of here! Go see a doctor! Use your brain! Jeez! So now I'm super paranoid. Super paranoid. I have... I'm not hanging out. Like, I'm not touching my kids. I'm not touching my... Like, I am staying away because I don't know if he had coronavirus or not. And so I'm gonna quarantine myself for like at least five or six days just to see if I have any uh, symptoms or anything. But yeah, that dude, like, 
Thank you very much for being an idiot. And look, I don't care if you just have a cold. Don't go to a freaking buffet with a cold. Like, come on, people. Just That's just being considerate in general, regardless of this virus going around. Like, just don't get people sick. Because you know he was... <laughs> now, to his, to his credit, he was coughing into a napkin, right? But still, still, that stuff spreads out. The, uh, it comes out the sides. Yeah. Dan, dude, you're in the same house. If he has it, you now have it. And so does your wife and kids. God, don't say that, man. Don't freak me out. Don't freak me out like that. I'm already freaked out. Like, I went outside to check mail the day, and I sneezed. I'm like, oh my god, I'm getting... Oh, wait, no, that's just because the sun was bright. Right? Like, that's why... That's why I did that. But still... So freaking worried about that. Okay. Okay, back to this. Okay, so I talked about constructing a view. Displayed in regions. I mean, this kind of looks like what I have on my slides, right? It kind of looks like displayed in regions. Yeah. Yeah, this totally makes sense. Okay. So this is what view composition is, right? Oh, Dan, the average age of people who have died is 80. I'm pretty sure you and your kids will be just fine. Yes, I know we'll be fine. But still, my dad is 72. My mother-in-law, my father-in-law, they're almost 70. So I got to at least stay away from them, right? I'll be fine. I'm fit as a freaking fiddle. <clears throat> okay, so, oh, wait. We got to add our animation here. Don't forget animations, Brian. Oh, they're already there. Uh, are these animations in the right order? Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, that'll work. I might need to rethink how that is there. KRJX, hey, I'm a photic sneezer too. Yeah, that sun gets me, man, every time. It gets me every time. Okay, so we talked about what a view is. Very simple concept, very simple. Uh, and then I think we hop into a demo. I think this is a good spot for demo slide where we create a very simple, it's just a view. It's a freaking view, like, it's so easy. Creating a view. Uh, then we talk about view composition. And I think in this course, yeah, creating a view. And see, the problem I also made here, big time, was I talked about creating a view and then I injected MVVM out of nowhere. Like, just out of nowhere. Right? Another big mistake, at least in this course, I'm going to talk about the views and then we're going to go into a whole thing on you know, the view model locator and how that works and MVVM and that stuff. So, I think that's a better approach. So, yeah, so we talk about view composition and then we talk, boom, view discovery. Right. Okay, our Jackson lunch is done, so gotta get back to fixing things so people can work remotely. Keep up the streams. Catch you later. Thanks for joining, KR Jax. Thank you very much. Okay, so views added dynamically. Yep, yep, yep. Okay. Oh, we're getting a little bit of code here. Okay, 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 here we go. So let's rethink this slide here. When we're talking about, okay, views are added automatically. Whoops, whoops, whoops. Okay, views are added. I got to put this last. I got to put this last. Uh, and you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to add a code slide. Uh, with title, nope, just title. Okay, so add with, uh, how do, how would I want to say this? Basically, you're adding with the region manager or register with the uh, region manager. Yeah, so with view discovery, so like the slide says, there's two types of view composition in Prism. Okay, you have view discovery, and view injection. As, as we say here in view discovery, view discovery is basically views are added automatically. Okay. You have, you have no control over this. 
So essentially what happens is you register these views with the region manager. And then when the, when the region is created, the region will look for these view types that have been registered. Okay. And then it will automatically create them and add them to the region. Right. So this means you have no explicit control over creating the object or how those objects are actually added to the region. It just, it's done for you automatically. Right. So having said that, maybe, maybe I should rearrange. I should rearrange this. Right? I talk about how they're added automatically. Well, hold on. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. But what I do know is I want to add a code snippet here on using view discovery. Right? So I need to open some code so I can copy and paste. Nope, not that. Nope, not that. Let's go. Dev. That's where I put it. Uh, <clears throat> register modules code. That one. Copy. Uh, so we'll go. Actually, I need. Oh, no. Creating views. How about. There we go. Creating views. Uh, before. After. Okay, got that in there. I'll add that. <clears throat> now let's just let's do. Uh, what are we doing? We're doing, we're doing, we're doing view discovery. Before, after, okay. So just for fun, I'm gonna put this in here just to get the code I wanna copy and paste. Actually, I could, you know what, screw it. Let's actually just create the view. Uh, creating views after. Let's just go create a view. It'd take me two freaking seconds. Not a big deal. Okay, so... Add... User control. View A. We have created a view. <laughs> Great demo, people. Great demo. I know it's hard, right? It's so hard. Uh, let's go horizontal. Whoops. Didn't mean to do that. Let's center it. And let's make the font size a little bigger, say 48. That'll work. Okay. Looks good. So that's done. We've created a view. And actually in my course, what did I say in my course? In my course uh, for creating a view. what did I do for this? Three minutes on creating a view. What the heck? Yeah, I totally over made that complicated. What'd I do? <clears throat> okay, what'd I do? What'd I do? Oh, I like created all kinds of views. That's why. See, that's not necessary. 
That's not necessary at all. Uh, yeah, no, don't need that. What the heck? Dude, I made that so much more complicated than it had to be. Yeah, don't need to do that. What the heck was I thinking? <sighs> wow. Just wow. Okay. <clears throat> so that's all there is to creating a view right there. I created a view. There's nothing else to it. Now what I can do, I can close this. Yeah, let's save it. Uh, now I'm going to copy that. View discovery. This will be the before. And this will be the after. Let's open up the after. Now we can actually hook this bad boy up. Let me make sure this is using the code. Yes, okay, it's using using that. I want to make sure. Okay, now we could say uh, var. Well, actually, I don't have to do that. Well, I can use this container provider. I don't have to. So all I need is the region manager. So I could either inject it in the constructor or I can resolve it from the provider in uninitialized. Oh my gosh. I'm not sure how I want to do this actually. So let me show you the two different approaches. Uh, the region name which is content region. I think that's what we called it. And then type of view A. Right, so this will totally work. So let's go ahead and run the app. And there it is. It's injected into the region automatically for us, right? Uh, pretty cool. But... This is adding a little extra code. I mean, I could show both ways. Uh, another way to do this is just to simply... Do this. I mean, I could do that too. And then actually get rid of this. Oh, decisions, decisions. And it still works. See that? So in case you missed what's happening is we have this shell and this shell has a region defined, right? And this shell has no knowledge of this view or anything about it. However, when this module loads, right, we're saying we're going to register this view, view A. We're going to register that type with this content region. So whenever that region is ready, it's been initialized, it's going to create an instance of that type and it's going to inject it into that region for us automatically. Now, it just comes down to code style. I personally am a fan of constructor injection. I really like constructor injection. So, I don't know. Dan, I'm very tempted to write a container provider that makes the WPF implementation as simple as they are for forms. Uh. Uh, I'm not sure. I'm not sure what I want to show. I mean, this is constructor injection. Uh, no, Mimsoft, my video is not frozen. I have uh, 6,100 kilobits per second upstream. So 
I'm good, my friend. You had me worried there for a minute, though. I don't know. I kind of like this, actually. The main purpose, the main purpose behind this uninitialized, and actually, I think that's what I'm going to do. I think that is exactly what I'm going to do. Because the main purpose behind this uninitialized here is in, to give you the ability to resolve objects that you have registered in this module, if that makes sense, right? Uh, why am I getting that squiggly? Let me. Oh, because I'm debugging. <laughs> yeah, sorry. Uh, that's the main purpose behind this un uninitialized. It's to resolve objects that you may have registered down here, right? That's, that's the purpose. Otherwise, you're going to use constructor injection. And the reason we did that is because we didn't want your modules having a dependency on the container. Right? Huh. But thinking about this... I huh. now that I think about it, maybe we should have not passed this. <laughs> maybe we shouldn't have passed that. And I think Dan, you're the one who convinced me to do this, actually. I said, sure, why not? Why not? Because then you... I mean, I guess it doesn't matter. It's too late now. But now it, it brings in this question of... Did we design that API right? Because I knew I fought this. I knew I didn't want to do this. Because you could always inject it in the CTOR. Dan, there are times you need it if you register something in the container and need to resolve it. Yeah, but what I'm saying is if you registered it here, right? You did your registration. You could still use this I container provider to, to resolve it. I region manager or I region. Yeah, I region manager. And this could have gone away. Right. Then we could have kept that the way it was. Or could have done that. Only if you use my container extensions. Yeah, I didn't want to register the iContainer provider. Because we, well, for one, I didn't want you passing it around, for one. We want to, I think that's kind of what convinced me, is that I didn't want you passing it around. I wanted to give it to you, and you should only be using this container at the composition root, if you will. Now, in a Prism application, it's a little different because technically the composition root is the Prism executable. However, you can think of a module as its own little mini composition route, right? So that module would need to have access to the container to do registering types and, uh, and to resolve some, some things that you've just registered. But nowhere in your app should you actually be passing around your container. So I think that's another reason why I'm like, okay, we can do that. Ugh. <clears throat> Dan, there are some solid, valid factory services that require it. Kind of like both the module initializer and service navigation service both inject the container. Yeah. 
Yeah, well, I'm not worried about the services that our, that the API uses. I'm not concerned about that. That's okay, but from a consumer perspective, you don't want to pass your container around. So now, you know what? I'm always, I'm always going to suggest constructor injection for these types. That's, that's my decision. I will always prefer constructor injection over using the container to create something in code. Because if by chance someone is mocking this, well, I mean, they would mock the iContainer provider too, though. Ugh. Decisions, decisions. I mean, this is going to be a course, people. This is going in a course. So I have to make sure the guidance I give. Now, what I could do is when I talk about this, I could talk about, hey, these, these two approaches are valid. I prefer this, but you can also do that, right? I prefer, I prefer having the region manager injected or actual all prism services injected via constructor. Use the I container provider to resolve your classes after the module has been created, right? Dude, just pretend you work for Microsoft and teach the worst possible method to program. <laughs> so throw out Prism and just teach code behind with lots of statics. Statics everywhere and just code behind. Yes, the Microsoft way. <laughs> God. And what sucks is, you know, if, if you work at Microsoft for a really long time and you just code that way, you'll never know any better. And you'll never want to learn how to properly structure your code to teach others how to properly do it. Uh, because that's just how you've been doing it. And it's fast. It is. It's fast. Uh, but in the real world, you can't take that code and use it. It's one of the Microsoft's biggest problems. They never show how to actually write proper code. Now, I, I don't want to use the word term proper. I just mean more maintainable code. How about that? Write maintainable code. Testable code. Dan and I were having this conversation just the other day about Xamarin Forms, how uh, there's a reason they never talk about testing, like unit testing, not their little UI test kit thing that you run through VMs and stuff. I'm talking about actual unit testing because the way they write code, it's impossible. Impossible. Especially with that essentials. Oh my gosh. Now they're going to put that in the, in the... I hope they're not putting it in the core, right? Oh, that would be nasty, like Dan was saying on Twitter. DB, I want to learn code so I can contribute to having Corona be defeated. What's the best language for that? You know what? I'm not an epidemiologist. I don't know anything about the study of diseases. So, uh, I don't know. That's a new one for me. That is a new one for me. That's an interesting question, though. So, okay, so this is what I'm going with. Decided. In this course and in my life, I'm going to teach you that in modules, when you're when you're dealing with modules, always use constructor injection if your types are already registered. Right? But if by chance you need a type that was registered after this module was instantiated, right? That means you can't inject it through the constructor. Then and only then would you use the container provider to do it. Boom. Use this for known types before instantiation. Use this for types after instantiation. Done. Dan, I love their comeback. We have 5,000 unit tests. Totally discounting the fact none of them tested a brand new property they were adding directly called Xamarin Essentials from the court. Yeah. Yep. And Dan said, my description is exactly right. Perfect. We'll go with that. So now what I want to do is I'm going to copy this code. And I'm going to paste it into here. Ooh, that's too big. Okay, let's undo that. 
And I noticed something else I need to do. Let me remove that indent. Hey. Okay, so... Let's... Let's make this font smaller. Oh, it's already 18. Oh my gosh. Okay, oh, 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 there's some... Hold on, I can... Okay, I can do this. Oh, wait. Maybe not. Oh, crap. Why are these space so large? There's like huge spaces between these. Paragraph. Uh, oh, hold on. Let's do format shape. <clears throat> Shrink text on overflow. Resize shaped. Nope. Okay. I'm going to delete this. So something is weird. But why are these spaces so huge? Do you see that? That's like... Like massive. So strange. Okay, I could probably get rid of this register types. Okay, yeah. Well, let's do that. Let's get rid of the register types. And then, so I could talk about... Okay, let's do this. Duplicate slide. Then let's make this black. No, no, not the highlight, not the highlight, not the highlight. All right, make that black. Because I could talk about first, what you're wanna, gonna wanna do, is you're wanting to grab an instance of this region manager. I think we said blue. No, yeah. Blue for those. I think that's what we said. Blue for types. Okay, so we have a region manager. So in the module, we're going to create a constructor and we're going to inject the region manager using dependency injection, right? Then what's going to happen? Ugh. Uh. I'm gonna make that orange. I'm not sure if I like these colors or not, honestly. But I just wanna highlight what we're using here, right? We're using the region manager. So first we're going to inject that region manager, right? into the constructor of the module. And then in the uninitialized of the I module, we're going to register view with region. And that's all there is to it. And then we hop into the demo of how to do that. Pretty simple, if you ask me. I mean, that's not bad. Okay, then we get to view injection. Uh, okay, so activate, deactivate, more explicit control, regions must exist before injecting view, yep. Uh, view, uh, okay, so I want to get rid of actual code snippets in this. I don't like that. So what did I do in my other course here? Yeah, see, that's view discovery. Demo view discovery. This is a minute and 46 seconds, so that was pretty quick. And you didn't need the container. You didn't need to register these types. Like, golly, man, I super complicated that freaking course. I'm sorry, people. I'm sorry. I, I was trying to please everyone and be, like, advanced. 
instead of keeping it simple. Instead of just keeping the stupid thing simple. See, even had constants. Like, no, I'm like, I was getting too much into things. Like, just keep the concept simple and move along. Okay, what I talk about here? View injection, yes. Okay, see, I don't want to show that. Definitely don't want to show that. Okay. So, view injection, five minutes. So, what did I do here? Oh my god, I was even doing view model first. Oh. Oh no, no I wasn't. Was I? Don't tell me I was. Please don't say I was. Yes, I was. Oh no, oh my god. Did I really show that? I'm so embarrassed. I'm so freaking embarrassed. Dan. You should show your guidance on not using magic strings because left to their own, people start doing name of you. Oh my God. Yes, you're right. Maybe I can talk about that somewhere. I might mention it in a demo. Oh my God, yes. Okay, so we're talking about adding views. Oh my God. So bad. So bad, Brian. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so I'm actually gonna look at that. That was horrible. Jeez, that was horrible. I cannot believe I showed that. Well, 10 years is a long time, so. Okay. So I copied that. This is good. I'm, I'm going with this. So let's uh, close this out. That was, oh, nope, that's not it. I want the project copy, because this after is, wait, view discovery. Yeah, 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 okay. Next is view injection. There we go. So we'll definitely start here before. And then, oh, actually. Yeah, 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 we can start there before, that's fine. After, okay, let's start playing with this after. I gotta see how I'm going to create this demo. And then that will kind of influence my slide deck a little bit. So first off, I know we have a view. Hello from view A. What? Contact service model pack. Okay, I don't have anything to do with that. So let's go ahead and run this. Should all still work. And it does, okay. But now we're going to move to view injection. So this is where this goes away. Right? And so... We're going to get the region. And now we can start doing things. Uh, bar view one equals, uh, see this case, container provider, 
dot resolve view A. Whoops. This is where I would use the container provider because I need it. Perfect example. Then we say region dot add view one. Let's go ahead and run that and it works the same, right? Exact same. That's perfect. Like there, it's exactly what I needed to do. Uh, now, what I want to do is talk about activation and deactivation. So, now that I have the view, I'll say view dot, no, view two dot content equals hello from, oh, actually, this, ah, uh, I don't know if I want to do this. I don't know if I want to do this. This, uh, this is bad practice. I don't want people doing this, but I want to demonstrate. Uh, whoops, not W. Right, I want to demonstrate how you can activate and deactivate these views. So hello from view two. Oh my God, I'm not sure I want to do that. So now if we run this demo, You're gonna see that, look, hello from view A is still there. It's it's not view two, but I just added view two to the uh, region. What's going on? Well, what's going on is all we did was add it to the region. We didn't actually bring it to the forefront, right? So regions are like a deck of cards, right? Remember how it said they, they track views like a, like a deck of cards. They just kind of stack and stack on top of each other. <clears throat> Excuse me. And so even though we added a new view to a new view instance on that in that region, in that collection, it doesn't automatically bring it to the front, right? We have to do that ourselves. So we have to activate that view. Okay, so now... I can activate view one and view one's going to be back on top. And there's the first view, right? Hello from view A. Or I can deactivate view one. And now view two is back on top. Oh, actually it's not. Because I didn't act, okay. When you, see, I gotta keep this simple. Because when I activate another view, it de deactivates the second view. So I, oh, okay. How do I want to explain this? Because the nuances get complicated. Right? There's view two. Because what happens in this scenario is that when you add a view to a region, right? It's adding to that deck of cards, right? And so you can activate a deck of cards. You can activate a deck or a single card in that deck and it's going to bring it to the top. <clears throat> well, that will automatically deactivate the existing current view and push it down in the, in the slide or push it down automatically. So by activating view one, we have deactivated view two, <clears throat> right? Lovejacker, hello, Papa View. <laughs> so this activate method will activate that view and bring it to the top and show it in the region. Right, well, that view is now the top of that deck. Act, uh, view two has now been deactivated and put underneath. But if we deactivate view one, right? If we de deactivate that, now we have two deactivated views. Nothing is being displayed, so we have to reactivate. So that gets 
it gets a little confusing in those minute details. So I have to really think about how I'm presenting this, this concept of activation and deactivation. Oh man, do I have anything? Uh, do I have anything in my training deck that talks about this? I don't think so, actually. I think the only time I really talk about this is when I start talking about navigation. So Lumjacker's trying to bait me. He's trying to ask me why I hate React so much. <laughs> He's trying to bait me. I'm not falling for it, my friend. Not falling for it. <clears throat> uh, oh. Where do I talk about this? I talk about this somewhere. I kind of talk about it here. I kind of talk about it when I'm talking about the uh, navigation journal, how the navigation journal works. Dan, just trying to do a stream with React totally effed up my stream and computer. <laughs> I remember that one. Uh, do I have... Yeah, see, I kind of talk about... Activation here. I don't know if I should kind of repurpose this and talk about how that works. In Lurker Mode... By the way, what is required to get access to your Slack server? I know you mentioned it earlier in the stream. If you want access to the Slack channel, which has nearly a uh, thousand people in it. CLW! Hello, my friend. What's going on? Uh, you actually have to be a sponsor of either Dan or myself. So Dan will probably post the links in there. Oh, he already did. He beat me to it. Uh, Zamdev.sponsorbrian or sponsor uh, Dan. And I think at the $5 a month sponsorship level, you get access to our uh, Slack channel. And so I actually have that running now. And I can kind of give you a sneak peek of what that looks like. So in this case, we have 900 people in our Slack channel. And we are here answering questions uh, and helping people with their problems. Everything related to PRISM. And the template pack, and you name it, it's on here. We even talk about stuff that has nothing to do with Prism. So, <clears throat> that's how. Why not Discord? Dan saying, funny you mentioned Discord. I'm actually looking into it right now for sponsors only. Yeah, Discord is just another freaking server to look into. Or another another service I'd have to monitor. And I'm, I don't have the time that Dan has. I got to focus my efforts in one area, so I will not be participating in any Discord. I just don't have time. Jeez, if you guys have seen my schedule, you'd freak out. But yeah, so now I have to decide what I'm going to do here. How am I going to properly explain this? I mean, I could repurpose these slides and kind of talk about how the activation... Whoops. Where to go? Where to go? Where to go? Where to go? I lost it. Oh, there, her. Right here. And talk about how this activation, deactivation stuff works. Because it gets a little confusing here. And I'm not sure I like, you know, having all this code. I mean, I could type it. It's not a big deal. I would just want to mention not to do this in production code, right? Like, this is for demo purposes only. Demo purposes only. You would never actually do this uh, in an application. Dan, what? Just because Discord and Slack and I have 21 organizations that ping me? Yeah, no kidding. Chandu16, hello. Thanks for joining, my friend. Nax Droid, thank you for the follow. Froogie, thanks for the follow. I'm sorry, I'm not getting... Any notifications because I've recently switched to stream elements. I used to use Streamlabs, but now I use stream elements and I'm not getting, I don't have any of my notifications set up yet. So please uh, accept my apologies for not recognizing uh, when you subscribe or when you uh, follow 
I'm gonna get that fixed uh, this weekend. All my all my alerts are gonna be working again, so I I, I apologize for that. Chandu16 says, I need some advice. Well, we're almost into the Ask Brian portion of our stream today. Curious Drive, is Stream Elements better than Stream Labs? Uh, I'm actually, I'm not sure. I just switched because I wanted to try it. Uh, the one thing I'm liking about it is, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to switch around some, some stream. Like I'm going to switch around a little bit. For example, I can go to my talking head here and you see like this bottom bar and this chat window and the background, like that is all like being fed from stream elements. Like that's not local, even though it probably could technically be local. Uh, it's all being fed from stream elements. They have like this layout manager thing, these overlays that you can create. And so I'm playing around with stream elements. I haven't formed an opinion yet, but I'm going to try it. Uh, first, I got to get my alert set up and get everything how I had with stream labs. Cause I liked stream labs. It was good. Uh, but now I'm going to see how stream elements is. And then I'm going to pick between the two once I have my, uh, my opinion formed. So it's too early. It's too early right now for me to form my opinion. Not enough information. So, Chandu16. Oh, CLW. Stream Elements is what we use at Twilio as well. Works really well for having multiple people use the same overlays. Uh, yeah, actually, I... The reason I'm actually trying... I'm actually trying Stream Elements is because I was watching my friend, uh, Brent Schooley, uh, Twitch... Uh, hold on. Actually, let me give a shout out here. Shout out CLW. Did that work? Yeah, there we go. Uh, and shout out to Chef Brent. Check these guys out. Right. Uh, so Chef Brent, I saw him using those overlay panels and stream elements. I'm like, huh, that looks kind of helpful. I, th I think I'll try that. Uh, and so... That's why I'm trying it. I'm a, I'm checking it out. It's it's only been today. Like today's my first day using it. So, but I I ran out of time. I couldn't get all my uh, couldn't get all of those uh, alerts set up. So I gotta I gotta get on that. Gotta get on that. Right. All right. So as far as this sample goes, I'm gonna have to really decide how I'm gonna explain this because this is kind of in the weeds. You know what I'm saying? How the prism actually does activation and deactivation on prism on uh, view injection. So I'm going to have to come back to this probably off stream and really think about how I'm going to present that information. Right? So actually I'm going to close that. And actually I'm going to paste that in there. If anyone would like to be a, a sponsor, $1 does go a long way. It helps me, you know, support the things I do, my YouTube channel, for example, if you haven't seen my YouTube channel, uh, I also... Oh, it's going to be loud, isn't it? Hey, everyone. Ooh. You know, I also stream... Uh, I back up these streams, but I also do a lot of uh, videos on how-tos and technical information. And I have a series about asking, you know, Ask Brian questions and things like that. So uh, feel free to check that out as well. <clears throat> All right. But it's... Oh, you know what? It's almost noon. It's almost lunchtime. So I think I'm going to start the wrap-up phase the wrap-up phase of the stream, right? So Curious Drive, I'm a new streamer. Started off with Twitch Studio. Then I started using OBS Studio and now I'm using Streamlabs. Yeah, so I'm using OBS Studio as well. I think most streamers do use some form of OBS uh, Studio. I know that like Stream Elements has a custom build of OBS. I think they call it OBS Live, but I don't use that. I use my, I use the default OBS Studio, okay? Uh, CLW, yeah, I tend to say whatever works for you. Yeah, I agree. But I know some other streamers who have a different opinion. Yeah, there's lots of different streaming consoles, if you will, or applications out there that, that will do this. Uh, there's also a, uh, a service out there called Restream uh, that lets you stream one stream to multiple platforms like Mixer, YouTube, uh, Twitch, uh, Facebook, things like that. So that's something else you might be interested in. If uh, I tried it, I did. I wasn't a fan of Restream, so I I stopped using it, and I solely focus only on uh, only on Twitch, 
only on Twitch, right? So, yeah, if you have any questions about, like, setup, things like that, feel free to ask me at any time. There's a lot that can go into it, but to start streaming, it could, it could be a very, very simple setup. Like, I started with a webcam and a Skype headset on a laptop. Like, I had nothing. It was... I mean, you don't need much to start. <laughs> Chandu16, any chance or any advice for a remote job? Well, yeah, I got lots of advice. I've been, I've been working remote for over eight years now. And I will never work in an office again. <laughs> I will never work in an office again. Uh, I don't know. There's a lot of opinions. I see on Twitter people saying things like, oh, dress for work. Don't wear your pajamas and, you know, set your work hours to your company's work hours and have blah, blah, blah. Like, give me a break. Yeah, that sounds great. Like, it, it sounds wonderful. This utopia of, you know, strict work at home, you know, rules. Uh, but it doesn't work that way. I guess I'm just more relaxed. I have found my groove and how I work at home better like that works for me everyone has a thing that works for them that's important the one thing that i would highly recommend is put your important times on your calendar block them out like lunch put your lunch on your calendar don't have any meetings when you're supposed to eat lunch that's a big one right gym time if you go to the gym in the day boom put it on your calendar block that time out anything that's important to you block that time out because one thing I don't do, or I try not to do, I try not to eat at my computer. I try to eat in the in my kitchen, right? Kind of step away, walk around. Sometimes I do, at lunch, I take a walk around the block when the weather's nice. I take my, my dog around the block for a walk, right? Uh, but yes, and you got to know what distracts you. What are your distractions? For example, I can't have the TV on in the background for noise, right? Uh, it distracts me. So I got to leave it off. No TV for me. I can't have it on. Even for background noise, I can't have it on. <laughs> Chandu says, oh, I mean getting a remote job. <laughs> Not after I got the job. <laughs> uh, yeah, you want a tip? Apply. And know what you're applying for. Know your job. What are you applying for? Right? That's, that's how you get it. There's nothing... Special, be prepared for your interview, know your stuff, uh, be a good interviewer or interviewee, I should say. Uh, yeah, but you have to apply. And if you're specifically looking for a remote job, you have to specifically apply for remote jobs. You can't go to a company who's hiring for a job and say, oh, can I work remote? Only at that position is remote. Should you ever bring that up? Know what you're getting yourself into, right? Yes, Dan, restream isn't very good. Uh, and you are correct. It will violate the Twitch user agreement if you are a partner or an affiliate. And now I am an affiliate now. So that's another reason I got rid of it. Plus, I mean, all the cool interactions and stuff that you get with Twitch is just so much more fun. Like I haven't, I'm going to be turning on some stuff now. I would be turning some stuff on. Uh, but yes, Dan, that is absolutely correct. If you're an affiliate or partner, you cannot broadcast your stream to multiple uh, platforms. Uh, what you can do is upload your stream after the fact, but the live stream has to be on Twitch. That is in the contract you sign that says, yes, I'm going to be your affiliate or yes, I'm going to be your partner. Right? Uh, Chandu, I mean, uh, I did, but no luck until now. Well, I wish you luck, my friend. Uh, I really do. I don't know. I don't know what the job market is like in Asia. Hopefully, it's hopefully it's strong. You know, I'm rooting for you. I, I know you can do it. Just stay focused, right? Stay focused. Don't give up. Don't be discouraged if you get a lot of no's. Uh, I got a lot of no's, uh, but the right company will find you, right? It'll find you. Smad, hey my friend, good to see you. Uh, was a remote worker in a distributed team during the '90s and 2000s when it was much, yeah, much harder to do back then for sure. Yes, tools and network. Oh, network speeds are massively different. I mean, I'm, I have a basic package which is 300 megabits down and 30 megabits up. So I have a pretty good, uh, 
pretty good connection. I could go gigabit, but I don't want to pay for it. <laughs> yes, man. We were all dial up back then. I remember that. Right? Those kids don't know. Kids nowadays don't know. Uh, I actually played a recording of that noise to my kids who are uh, 14 and uh, 10. They had no idea what that was. Of course not. Of course not. They saw a typewriter and didn't know what a typewriter was. What's a typewriter? What is that? I showed them an old flip phone. And they're like, what? Phones used to look like this? You couldn't text? You could only call? No way. <laughs> Smab, you're kidding. Eight down and 0.7 up. Holy cow. I think like 4G on your phone is like faster than that, right? Dude, I'm sorry, man. That sucks. That is a horrible internet speed. Oh, yeah. Show them a rotary phone. I would, but I, I don't... I can't get one. I don't know where to find one. Yes, your phone is faster. Exactly. So are you watching the stream on your phone, Smab? Probably. Dan, show them the original lethal weapon. <laughs> Danny Glover had a corded phone that was attached to a briefcase. You know what? My dad had a car phone like when they first came out. Remember those first car phones? They were like like a brick. They were like this freaking big, right? And they had the cord attached to it like it was awesome. I thought he was the coolest guy ever when I saw that. Like, oh my god, you have a car phone! You can call anyone in your car, you know, but he wouldn't let me call anybody because apparently it was stupid expensive to use. <laughs> so he mainly had it for looks. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah, that was back when you had to pay like 25 cents per text or something like that, right? You had to pay per text. You had to pay per minute for long distance. Oh my gosh. Those were the days. Man. If the gray in my beard doesn't give it away, I'm I'm pretty old. We're getting old. Yeah. Oh, pagers! Yeah, back when you could still find payphones. Sorry, I got your page, but not any chances for the payphone. <laughs> yeah, I'm. I was so cool. You'd be driving along, beep 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 beep. Look down. Oh, got a page. Got to pull over, find a payphone. Yeah, I'm cool. I'm needed. <laughs> MM soft. It was seven dollars and fifty cents per minute for the car phone, and it did take up a lot of room. That's for sure. Smab, I consider you young. Oh, thank you, my friend. I appreciate that. I like to think I'm young at heart, right? But oh, okay. Well, you know what? It's about my lunch time. So what I'm gonna do is let's find somebody to raid shall we let's see who shall we raid and then i'm going to uh i'm going to get all my alerts and stuff set up with stream elements and then i will give everyone a uh an update curious drive bald bearded builder i'm not finding a bald bait is that the right hold on Is that, let's see, I'm going to do slash raid. Uh, is this right? All right. Cool. I think that's it. All right, Curious Drive. Thank you very much for the tip. We're going to raid Bald Bearded Builder. Right? See what he's working on. Uh, I want to thank everyone for joining me today. Uh, I know you could spend your time doing anything else with there anywhere else and you chose to spend it with me and I really appreciate that I appreciate you. I want you to have a great weekend and I will see you uh, next Tuesday. So uh, let's go ahead and uh, 